Mitsuru Sasaki is a talented Japanese chef known for having the taste buds of a mythological giraffe. He never forgets the taste of the food he eats and is always spot on when copying dishes, even without a recipe. One afternoon, a bedridden man and his wife call him to make a last meal for the dying man. Sasaki comes to the hospital room with a table fitted with all the ingredients and utensils. The dish he is making is a simple fried rice and omelet, but it has to be exactly like the one the man and his wife used to have when they were young. They watch him closely as he showcases his skills with knives. Halfway through the cooking, the familiar aroma of omelet spreads around the room, shocking the couple. It is spot on with how their house smelled like like every morning when they were young and struggling. At last, they get to taste the food and tear up because of the memories it brings. After devouring it all, the man declares it his last meal and asks his wife to reward the chef for his work. Sasaki is thanked, but he doesn't show any emotion while being praised. All he cares about is the one million yen he is getting to cook the dish. Somewhere else, Sasaki's best friend, Ken, is at a funeral. Sasaki and Ken were brought up in a children's home by the director. Recently, he passed away, but Sasaki refuses to go to his funeral. A flashback reveals that the director never supported their decision to learn culinary art. Hence, Ken and Sasaki ran away from the children's home when they were teens. Ken kept in touch with the director, but Sasaki never did, which is why he doesn't feel like he deserves to be at the funeral. Ken calls him repeatedly because it was the director's last wish to meet his son-like boy, but Sasaki hangs up without listening. We find out that Sasaki's restaurant failed a while ago, which put him in a lot of debt. Currently, he makes money by cooking rich people their final meals. A flashback shows that the restaurant was doing pretty well and was renowned for its authentic taste. However, because of Sasaki's perfectionist nature, he threw away a lot of dishes made for the customers if they weren't perfect. This caused his employees to hate the work environment, and ultimately, no one wanted to work with him. That night, Sasaki gets a call from an agent asking him to come to China to cook the last dish for someone important. They offer him 3 million yen for a single dish, a deal Sasaki cannot refuse. The next day, he lands in Beijing and meets the said important person. He is an old man named Seimei Yo, a chef respected by every Chinese culinary artist. He cooked for generals and emperors during the time of World War II and is regarded as a legend of East Asian and European cuisine. Sasaki is confused as to why someone like Yo wants him to cook his last dish. Why doesn't he cook his own damn final meal? The man introduces himself before revealing that a teacher, now Taro, taught him to cook everything he knows. Now Taro paved the way for his career and made him into who he is today. When they were in Manchuria during World War II, they created 112 dishes, each made with different flavors and different cooking techniques. They were the rarest world delicacies, but the recipes have been lost. No one knows now Taro's whereabouts, but Yo believes that he still has the recipe book. Sasaki's job is to find now Taro's book and cook the dishes he created. Since the work is tedious, he will be compensated with 50 million yen. The money will pay off all of Sasaki's debt, but he is still unsure about the task. He goes to Ken's local restaurant with the 3 million yen he got as an advance and asks him for advice. Being a good friend, Ken gives him a green light to accept the task because even if he fails, he has nothing to lose. The next day, Sasaki goes to a government office and looks at Naotaro's ancestry. He discovers that the man retired in 1964, but no one knows what happened to him after that. While looking through the pages, someone named Tatsumi catches his eye. He seems to have been a close friend of Naotaro who might know his whereabouts. In the following scene, Sasaki goes to Tatsumi's house and finds out he has been dead for over a decade. However, his wife gives him the address of another man who might be able to help him. The man's name is Kamata, and he was now Taro's helper when he was in Manchuria. Kamata lives on a secluded mountain, running a small restaurant. He discloses that he doesn't have the recipe book, but he can tell Sasaki how the recipes were created. From there, the story goes into a flashback. In 1933, Naotaro, his wife Chitsu, and a young Kamata came to Manchuria for the first time. They were called by the Japanese army general who wanted Naotaro to create the best delicacies for the emperor about to visit in a few months. Naotaro was given his private kitchen with all the ingredients and equipment he needed. 
They were also introduced to a Chinese helper named Yo, none other than the old man who is now a retired world famous chef. Sasaki is shocked upon hearing the name of the person who hired him. Yo was arrogant on his first day. He comments that the Japanese cannot make dishes better than Manchurians, but now Taro doesn't take it to heart. He instead asks the helper to make something for the family because they are tired. <laughs> Shut up and cook, you peasant. Yo makes a famous watermelon dish and puts something special in it which he claims is a secret ingredient. After devouring the food, now Taro gets up and skillfully creates an exact replica of it. Yo tastes the food and is astonished because the chef has nailed the taste, exactly, even without the secret ingredient. Now Taro reveals that he never forgets the taste of the food he eats, a unique talent he has learned over the years. Yo is much more welcoming after the incident. They start working together beginning the next day, and the first dish Yo makes is a Manchurian spring roll. Now Taro puts a twist on the dish, creating a version that suits both Asian and European taste buds. This spring roll has fish and meat inside and is delicious. Back in the present, Kamata makes the same dish for Sasaki and asks him to taste it. Even the critical chef is blown away by the taste, but he comments that the amount of salt could be reduced. Kamata freezes in shock as the comment sounds a little too familiar to him. Now Taro frequently used to comment that he puts too much salt in everything back when they worked together. Moreover, he was very critical of the food he created and threw away anything that wasn't 100% perfect, much like how Sasaki is. After Nataro's first week in Manchuria, the army general is presented with the first dish he came up with. The man devours it all and allows him to create more of such dishes. As work continues, Shitsu takes on the responsibility of being the group's photographer. She also helps her husband write the recipes down at the end of every day, but refrains from helping in the kitchen because she is pregnant. We are also introduced to the regular military chefs, whose job is to cook for the people on the base. They do not go inside the special kitchen, knowing that it is for experimental and special purposes. The chief cook and his son are always eager to socialize and grow close to Chitsu with time. One day, Nataro introduces the concept of 112 dishes assigned to four respective seasons. They will continue creating new dishes and adding them to the wall, innovating and removing some in the process. In the following montage, we see them experimenting with many foods from around the world. The wall eventually fills up with recipes and they finally make 112 new dishes. The team wants to celebrate, but Nataro surprises them by tearing off some of the dishes. According to him, their real challenge has just started because now they have to pick the good ones out and throw away the average ones. For the next few months, Nataro immerses himself in work, but fails to come up with new ideas. Chitsu sees him struggling and advises him to start trusting his colleagues. Up until now, Nataro only trusted his craft and didn't believe Yo and Kamada could come up with great ideas. Chitsu knows that he can only win if he keeps this arrogance aside. A few days after that, Chitsu gives birth and passes away. Not even an hour later, the head cook finds Nataro in the kitchen cooking something and calls him out for being a heartless man. Nataro reveals that he is making Chitsu's favorite dish and they enjoy a feast in her memory. Now, the responsibility of his newborn daughter is entirely in his hands. Back in the present, Kamata stops talking and gives Sasaki the address of a Russian man named Joseph. Sasaki has to go to him to hear the rest of the story. Upon reaching Joseph's restaurant, he finds out the man is dead, but his son Robert is ready to tell him anything he wants to know. Robert used to be best friends with Nataro's daughter, Misa, when she was a child. At one point in history, Nataro was called to cook for a Jewish exchange party where he met Joseph. It is also when Robert and Misa met for the first time. Now Taro and Joseph have their differences at first, but now Taro manages to impress him with his non-traditional cabbage roll dish. It has elements of Russia, Japan, and China, making it a perfect dish for meeting with people of all these nations. The meeting was highly successful, and all credit went to now Taro. This marked the beginning of now Taro and Joseph's friendship. At present, Sasaki is offered the cabbage dish that Joseph's restaurant still serves today. He is yet again blown away by another of now Taro's dishes. 
After devouring it, Sasaki inquires where the recipe book with 112 dishes is. Robert reveals that one afternoon, Nataro came to Joseph in a hurry and trusted him with the recipe book and a letter. At that time, Manchuria was swarming with spies from different communist parties. Nataro was told Yo was a Chinese spy who had not only been keeping an eye on them but was selling the recipes to outsiders. The betrayal prompted Nataro to kick Yo out of the base, asking him to never return. Sasaki is in shock that the person he met at the beginning of all this was the villain. But then, Robert hits him with another surprise, disclosing that Nataro asked Joseph to give the recipe book to Yo. This means the old man had the recipe this whole time, but he still made Sasaki run around for it. After finally figuring everything out, he goes to Yo and inquires what the last piece of the puzzle is. Yo still says that he doesn't have the recipes and asks him to read the last letter left by Nataro. In it, Nataro discloses that he was asked to poison the Japanese emperor when he came to feast in their establishment. The army general is being given a lot of money to do so and is offering the same to Nataro. If the plan goes right, they will blame Yo for poisoning the emperor because he is Chinese. Not just that, but Kamada turns out to be a Japanese spy sent to keep an eye on Nataro and the group. Nataro doesn't have the option to refuse the offer, so instead, he kicks Yo out of the establishment to save his own life. However, the general doesn't give up, still asking Nataro to cook for the emperor and poison the food. Hence, the night before the food trial, Nataro copies a second recipe book and hands it over to Joseph. On the day of the trial, he burns the original copy of the book, angering the general because his plan is now ruined. As a result, Nataro is imprisoned. To ask for forgiveness, Kamada tries to break his master free at last. But before he succeeds, the general shoots Nautaro dead. His daughter Misa remains with the head cook, who takes care of her like his own daughter. Soon, the Sino-Japanese War starts, and he brings his son and Misa to Japan to save their lives. Yo says that he made connections with Japanese high profiles and climbed the ladder of success. Meanwhile, Kamada went to war. Several years later, they reunite and look for Misa because she is the true heir of the recipe book. They find her still with the head cook and his son, who she calls her elder brother. She also has a little son, but her husband turns out to be dead. On finding out about her father, Misa breaks into tears and promises to open a restaurant using his recipes to honor him. Everything goes well until the day of the restaurant's opening. It lights on fire and Misa dies trying to save the recipe book. Her poor kid screams for his mother, but she never returns. The book, however, was miraculously saved. A few days after her death, her elder brother took the responsibility to take care of her son and established a children's home for less fortunate children. This is when Sasaki realizes that the kid is himself. Now that's food for thought. He is Nataro's grandson and Misa's son, who lost his family and was raised by his uncle in a children's home. Yo sent him out on this mission so he would find out about the history of culinary art in his family through research. In the end, the director wanted to meet him before dying because he had the recipe book and he wanted to hand it over to its rightful owner. But instead of being handed the thing up front, Sasaki got to travel the world and get paid 50 million bucks, so I'd say he made the right choice. At last, we see Sasaki return to the children's home and pay respect to his uncle's shrine. He finally receives the recipe book and sees the pictures of his family on it. His uncle didn't want him to become a chef because he had seen his family suffer due to their obsession with food. In the final scene, Sasaki recreates his grandfather's dishes for the children of the establishment. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.